Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today's node is the U Shape Node or the USD Shape Node. So we're going to jump into Fusion and uh, to be able to go over our U Shapes, first we're going to bring in a U Render and we're going to look for a U Shape. We're going to input that into our Render and we're just going to use our camera lights. We're not going to set any lights up for the scene. So the U-Shape node is what we use to make different basic uh, primitive 3D shapes. So within the Shape node, if we go up top, we've got multiple shapes, but I'm just going to go over the capsule right now, then we'll go over everything else, and then we'll go back to all the different shapes. So on the capsule node, we can uh, select whether it's double-sided or not, and I'll show you that here in a second. We can change the radius. We can change the height. We can change the base subdivisions, the actual cylinder subdivisions, and the cap subdivisions. So basically up here. Underneath we have a subdivision scheme and all these shapes have different schemes, but they're pretty much all the same. Some have additional ones, but we have none. We can select bilinear. And again, we can change our uh, subdivisions to change the look. And we have Catmull Clark. And within the Catmull Clark, we have uh, two versions. We have the standard and then we have smooth. And this is going to be different for every shape. So as we go over the shapes, we'll switch between these and you can see what the different uh, subdivision schemes and triangle subdivision rules are doing. So we're going to set that to none. We'll up all these and then underneath we have angle and this just allows you to change the angle of that capsule. And if I uncheck double sided, you can see what that's doing. So anything not facing the camera is going to uh, not be rendered. But if we leave it checked, everything, whether it's facing the camera or not, is going to be rendered. And then the angle you can change your start and your end angle. And down here for everything, we have export as separate stage. And then we're going to jump over to transform and we have all the typical transforms on your X, your Y, your Z. We can rotate it on the X, the Y and the Z. And we can change our pivot and we can change our scale. And if we need to uh, unlock that, we can change it independently on X, the Y and the Z. Under material, we have three ways to assign material. The first is color and here. We can just change the diffuse color so we can select a color that we want. We can change it independently on the red, the green and the blue. Under emissive, we can change our emissive color if we want. And we can change that independently on the red, the green and the blue. Now our workflow mode allows us two different ways to assign like shine and the actual material. So under the metallic workflow, we can assign how metallic the object is. We can change the roughness of the metallic object. We can add clear coat and to be able to see what this is doing, we're going to zoom into our little uh, light shine in here. And if we add our clear coat, you can see what that's doing to our material. And then we can change the clear coat roughness. Now for our opacity, this isn't just for a material. This is actually going to change the opacity of our shape and the material. So the entire opacity. So if you need to make glass, this is how you would do it. And then we've got an opacity threshold, which is just pretty much going to shut you on and off. Under texture, we can assign a texture, but just know on this note itself, we have no inputs, so we can't input things like bump map and emission and all that stuff on this. We will go over the U shader node later, and this is where you would do all that. But under texture, we can browse for a material and we can just add a basic 2D image as a uh, 
material and it can be whatever you want. And if it's got alphas within your uh, image, it'll apply those alphas as well. But once you assign that texture, we can still play with the metallic and the roughness in the clear coat and clear coat roughness, as well as your alpha threshold. And then under material X, if we have material X, I'm not going to go over this yet. I'll wait till we actually cover the material X shader. And uh, we'll revisit this area, but this is where you would sign your material X materials. So let's jump back over to color and instead of metallic, we can also use specular if we need to create like a plasticky type materials and we can change our specular color here. We can change it independently on the red, the green, and the blue. We can change our roughness. We can change our clear coat, our clear coat roughness. And again, we have opacity. Now jumping back over to our controls under our shapes, in addition to the capsule, we also have a cone and on the cone, we can select whether it's double sided or not. We can change our radius. We can change the top radius. We can change our height, change the base and height subdivisions. And under subdivision scheme, we can select bilinear loop or Catmull Clark. And under Catmull Clark, we have the option for the standard and smooth. Now this loop right here, this will come into play when we get to the rectangle I'll kind of, or the box. I'll show you what this loop is really doing to our shape. I'm going to leave this on none, but we can also change our angle. And down here, whether we have caps on the bottom or the top, and let's go uh, transform this a little bit so you can see what's happening. So if I unselect bottom, this is the bottom cap. And if my uh, top radius more than zero, we can add top caps. We've also got cube and whether it's double sided or not, we can lock our width and height so we can change the size. We can change the size on the width, the height and the depth independently. If we uncheck that, we can change our subdivision on the width, the height and the depth. And under our subdivision scheme, we have none bilinear loop and cat mole. And this is where you can see where the uh, loop and cat mole Clark are really coming into play. If we uh, look at our little square here. And we change our subdivisions. It's changing how rounded that little uh, box or cube is. Same with our Catmull Clark. It'll keep it rounded. And we could use smooth or the Catmull Clark. And as we change our depth of that uh, subdivision, it'll change how rounded that cube is. We've also got cylinder. And we can change our radius our height, we can change the base subdivisions, our height subdivisions, and we have the same uh, bilinear and Catmull Clark for our subdivision scheme. And we can change the angle of our uh, cut. And again, we can have caps on the top and the bottom. Or we can turn them off. We've also got Ico. And here we can change the size, we can change the subdivisions. And under our subdivision scheme, this is where it'll uh, really affect the look. So if we have bilinear, you can see we can change those subdivisions to make it more of a uh, cubed ICO. Loop, Catmull Clark, and we've got smooth and the standard. In our plane, we can lock our width and height or we can change our width and height independently. We can change the subdivisions as well as our subdivision scheme. 
under sphere, we can change our radius, our base and our height subdivisions. And down here, we can select between bilinear or Catmull Clark, or the regular in the smooth. Now, the difference between this sphere and our icosphere, you notice down here, we can't change our cuts in that actual ICO. But under a sphere, we can change the uh, angle of our cut, as well as change it on the latitude line. And then finally, we have our torus. We can change our radius, select whether it's double-sided or not. We can increase or decrease our section size, change our base and our height subdivisions, as well as bilinear and Catmull Clark for our subdivision scheme. We can change the angle, as well as change that lat. So that is the U shape node. I will see you in the next node breakdown.